beautiful welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video that's gonna be this week's new makeup releases we're gonna chat about the new makeup that's been released announced and sneak peeked and i'm gonna let you know whether or not i want to pick it up whether or not i already did or if i'm gonna anti-haul it and then you let me know down in the comments if this is something that you're interested in and remember it is okay to disagree friends don't always agree with each other but friends are always respectful towards each other and if you haven't been here before this is your first video here hello my name is angie i am such a lover of beauty makeup i love everything beauty makeup related especially things that are a little bit more colorful like this look right here but i don't discriminate listen i've been into neutrals too it's fun it's all fun makeup is supposed to be fun and if you want to see some more makeup content don't forget to subscribe because i upload five videos <laughs> Although I will say that lately I've been uploading quite a lot and it's been, I think it's six videos this week. It is what it is. I did film this look and it's coming on Monday. I actually used a my palette, which is the Odin's Eye and Anielke Nyquist Hella palette. This palette is restocking on, this one is so well used. <laughs> is restocking on the 22nd of March and I will leave some info about the exact time zones and like all of that down below. This is most probably going to be the last restock of this palette so if you did want to grab it, it's been out of stock now for a little bit, this this will probably be your last chance but I will have this look up on Monday and I will also like I have so many like reels i have a playlist full with looks of this palette so if you want to see more looks and more swatches check out the playlist but yeah this one is restocking on the 22nd i wanted to let you know because it's been out of stock for a bit the second thing that i wanted to quickly mention is that the pastel palette by natasha denona is now available i have made a video on this palette and i have that video uh, already live on my channel it was a bonus video this week so i did try this one out and a lot of you were asking what i think about this compared to the bh cosmetics lost in los angeles which has been my favorite pastel palette uh, because also it's so good and it's also so affordable so if you want to see comparisons watch this and hear my thoughts and see two looks with this. It's already live on my channel. This one is available at Sephora now. I will link both the palette and my video down below. Okay, let's get into... Listen, I've only gotten one PR thing this week and I am so excited because I have been so behind on planning, filming, organizing, getting stuff done. So it's really, really nice to be able to get one thing and just be able to like really look at that thing. And that is the new release from Kyla. I'm actually gonna scoochie scoochie so I can put up a picture without like flipping my lights over. Is that, is, are you okay, sir, sir? This is a picture that I have taken myself of this uh, collection. The collection consists of an eyeshadow palette that is the Art Nouveau palette. So this is an Art Nouveau inspired collection. This is inspired by painted glass and windows of painted glass, if I'm not totally mistaken. I actually did meet up with a the brand. They are an Austin uh, based indie brand and they did gave me, uh, give me this palette. I would say that this is a, a rainbow palette, but it has a, a black black, a white, two browns, and also has this really nice like olive green down here, so you could go neutral, and it also has a mix of shimmers and mattes, so there's a different ways you can go. I think my favorite uh, shade in this palette is this super like almost neon light lemony yellow matte. It's really, really pretty. I do have a reel on this one up. Uh, I will link that reel down below. You can just see a look that I did. I also did uh, use this. This is an um, eyeliner palette, like in, what do you call them? Like uh, potted eyeliners palette? <laughs> the water activated eyeliners, that's what they are. And you have two metallics and you have six mattes. And this is in collaboration with, let me so I don't uh, mispronounce, Sunshine the Bee. She is an incredible, like, true artist on Instagram. I will link her down below. And this is the Daydream palette. Look at this Art Nouveau. I oh, love this kind of, oh, it's, it's everything. So yeah, th this is the first time that they're doing an eyeliner palette like this or like a water activated eyeliner. I've used it once and I didn't have any problems with it. This is, by the way, the Kiss, you know, the painting by Gustav Klimt. The Kiss, it's that on the front. I mean, Kyla Beauty is a brand that's really into color and colorful makeup. And I do think that one rainbow palette, especially when it's well composed at this one, it really fits in with the brand. So that's one thing that I wanted to talk about that I actually have here in my possession. The look that is in the reel from Instagram, I also filmed that look for a like a makeup tutorial for Instagram. So that's also coming soon. I just need to get all my, <laughs> all my ducks in a row. It's like I said, I have so many Instagram things there are like a, probably like five Instagram tutorials that I need to edit, but 
it is what it is. Okay, let's talk about some news. Let's talk about this one. Makeup Revolution is back at it, just determined to destroy every good childhood memory you ever had. Last time they went for The Lion King, now they're coming for Dr. Seuss. Nothing is holy, nothing is protected. So this is the uh, Makeup Revolution, oh I'm sorry, I Heart Revolution. <sighs> Collaboration with Dr. Seuss. Uh, Trend Mood says, this is so cute. Listen Sophie, I love you, but don't sugarcoat it. This is boring. This is everything that Makeup Revolution has already done, they just put a Dr. Seuss sticker on it. That's what this is. I think doing collaborations that are a little bit kooky, that are a little bit fun, a little bit out there, like Dr. Seuss is so colorful and so kooky and definitely so out there, just need to be more than a sticker on a palette. It needs to be more than that. It's just, it's probably not a sticker, it's like, you, but you get it. Like, this doesn't look like anything else. This looks exactly like anything they've ever released. And I just, I don't know if I'm having high demands. I'm just, I'm just not that impressed. I just feel like it looks so, they're always taking the easy way out. They're always, I feel like they're sitting at meetings, looking at projects and being like, how do we finish this project in the least amount of time with the least amount of effort? And then they just take that route. They're never gonna go the extra two miles to make something a little bit more special. I just, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe, maybe other collections are the exact same, but just they've done so many collections at this point and none of them really have an, a different color story that's just... I mean, this could have been their Lion King palace. They have a similar color story. To those Those didn't really make sense either. Maybe I'm being too harsh. I just feel like, can you just instead just do one collection and just do it really, really good? <sighs> Maybe I'm... I don't know. You're gonna have to let me know if you think I'm totally out of line. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired, okay? I'm tired. This is the new eyeliner by Benefit. This is the, the Real Extreme Precision Liner. This is a waterproof liquid liner. I'm not a hundred percent. Oh, this is a brush tip. Yay! This is what I was gonna say. Is it the difference that it's waterproof? Because they've had liners before. No, this is a... Uh, this is a brush tip because the liners that they had before they were felt tip liners and I don't want to say I hated them I didn't hate them. They were really good for being felt tip liners, but I'm not a big fan of felt tip liners. I honestly There's not a single Situation where I think a felt tip liner is better than a brush tip liner. I'm gonna be honest and never will I prefer that ever so I think it's really good that they're coming out with the a, a brush tip liner. I could definitely see myself uh, trying this one out when I'm out of liquid liners. I will say though that right now I have two ones that I'm using, a drugstore one and a high-end one, and I like both of them. One of this is the Physician's Formula and the other one is the Hindash one. like both of them, but if I run out, maybe I'll try this one. I honestly don't think that this is a bad idea because a lot of people use eyeliners and I think feel like most people are on board on the train where we realize that there are like only benefits. <laughs> benefits, ha! Ah! Okay, I need to calm down. But there's only benefits to the brush tip liners. Again, maybe I'm being too harsh. <sighs> Friends, I don't know what to think about this. Where did I put this? Did I, <sighs> wait, wait, let me get this Ariana Grande times two, chapter two. This is the good, good night and go. Rem Beauty by Ariana Grande. I don't know who's coming up with these color stories. Ooh, it just looks very early 2000s and not in a good way. Not the early 2000s that I want to bring back. It's like, it just looks a little dusty. It looks a little dusty. This, this doesn't look like early 2000 makeups done today. This looks like actual 2000 makeups that they found and just, and here, <laughs> want some? I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. There are some like cheek stains um, or like cheek all over sticks. Eyeshadow gloss? Who's asking for that? Did you ask for that? 
I'm not mad, I just have questions. This the Eclipse Cheek and Lip Sticks. Those look really nice, like chubby sticks. People really love that. I could be really into that as well. It's just such an easy touch and go product. Kiko has a really good, it's called a three in one stick. It is a wonderful like multi-stick product. It's like the best multi-stick product that I've tried. So if this could be that, maybe that could be really nice. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Lash and Brow Boosting Serum. Ooh, I would love to see the ingredients for that one because if that is just castor oil in a dusty packaging, I'm gonna be upset. By the way, there is absolutely no scientific proof that castor oil does anything for growing your hair. I hate to be the one to tell you, but someone had to be. Someone had to be the one to tell you. Colourpop is having another collection. This is the Oopsie Daisy collection. This is a spring collection. I mean, it's 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 what to be expected from a spring collection. I did not receive this one in PR and I did not get the lime collection either. I really do like the look of that lime palette though. I think I'm gonna pick that one up next time I do an order when something else releases that I want. This one, I mean, I'm not super sad that I'm not getting this one. It is a super chic blushes and I really love those, but these are the matte formula and that is not as much of a favorite for me as the shimmer formula is. Super shock eyeshadow, some eyeliner, some... Is that the Fresh Kiss Glossy Lip Stain? Um, the lip cremes I absolutely hated. The lip stains I haven't tried. I mean, this is a pretty generic spring collection. It's what to be expected, but I do think that some people are gonna look at this and be like, oh yeah, I want that. And I think that like, if people see this, they're not maybe as into the beauty community as I am, and maybe you as well, just see this at like Ulta, for example. I definitely could see this selling out at a place like Ulta, because have you seen the best sellers of Ulta? There's like not a colorful eyeshadow to be seen. Like all of it, best sellers, it's like new. That's all there is. I will link all of the things in the description box and I will also link what's on my face in the pinned comment in case you're interested in any of this. I do use affiliated links, so just know that if you click on the links, but if you do shop through my links, thank you so much for helping out my channel. This is mystifying. <laughs> like this is a new collection from Stila. And I feel like if you are a brand that is not really talked about, why would you choose this release? Although I am talking about it. But maybe not in a positive way, because I'm like, why are we having a round blush with square pan eyeshadows and that dead space? I'm, I'm just a little bit confused. There is also in this collection the dual ended eyeliner and shimmer, shimmer micro tip, micro tip? Is it shimmer? Who wants that? Who wants a shimmer? Wait, I'm confused. I don't know what that is. I was hoping that it was like, liquid liners in colors because that green looks cute but maybe it's not that at all i just i love that orange blush <sighs> cheek products and eye products together i don't love it let me just put it like that i don't love it i don't love that there's a round pan with a square pan i don't love the dead space i think that i prefer more let me, let me phrase this in a good way. I prefer more to have an eyeshadow palette where I realize that I can use some shades for my cheeks or the opposite. Having a cheek palette where I realize that I can use some shades on my eyes than having a dedicated this is for cheeks, this is for eyes. Because is that a cream? Is that a cream blush? So it's a cream, is it, is it cream blush? So they put a cream blush with the... Yeah, this is my disappointed face. Let's move on to the next disappointment. And this is Pat McGrath and Bridgerton round two. The collection that really wasn't needed. What is the difference between this one and the old collection, except that they're bringing in the ugliest cheek palette packaging I have seen for a really long time. And keep in mind that I talk about Makeup Revolution a lot on this channel. What in bulky hell is that cheek palette? Three round pans 
it, it heart one and that ugly brooch in the middle lots of dead space bulky packaging cardboard and that like what about that packaging says hi i am probably like 70 dollars what about that packaging says that do you do you do you feel an air of like luxury about that that could I've said this before, I think it's very important when I'm buying something that's luxury uh, luxury price tag on it, I want the luxury experience. If I'm buying designer shoes, if I'm buying expensive makeup, I want everything, I want the full experience. It's not just about getting the product, it's about like, you're, you're paying for all of it, the whole experience, and that packaging is not it. And also the eyeshadow palette, they took the shades from before and they switched out that shimmer silver blue for gold. Pinks and gold, really, Pat? Groundbreaking. I know I'm being harsh, but I'm just like, I can't pretend that I'm impressed by this collection. It is not it. This is, this is not a good collection from a luxury brand. This is so similar in colors to what she just released three months ago. And now she's releasing it again. Same kind of cheek colors. We're still in the pinky, the gold era. This whole Pat McGrath Labs journey has been a pinky gold era. It's That is one big era. But it's like, you just released this. You just released this. And I even said that my gripe with the six pan palette, because I own it, it's here somewhere. My gripe with that six pan palette from Pat McGrath is that it's a one trick pony. Whatever you do, it's going to be pink. And now she's coming up with another six pan palette and it's also pink. Come on. I feel like that meme. We're all rooting for you. What is this? And that cheek palette, I can't, that is the ugliest. I don't get it. I will say though, there are some body powders. I don't do body shimmers. I am the kind of person that like, I was going to say I touch myself a lot. <laughs> that took a turn. Don't demonetize me. I just mean like I'm always doing stuff like this and I get glitter everywhere. I'm hugging my cat. I'm hugging my dog. I'm hugging my husband. I'm hugging my pillow. I can't. Everything turns sparkly. I don't want my house to look like the colors are shedding over here, but I will say those lipsticks, I'll probably pick up one of those lipsticks. They're supposed to be the, the satin formula and I have never tried any of Pat McGrath's lipsticks. I do own a lip liner from Pat McGrath and I prefer something that's a little satin or a little glossy over something that's fully matte. So yeah, I'll probably pick one of those up. Those look really cute. And I like the bow. That packaging, that packaging looks luxurious. It looks really nice. I'll leave the details down below. I don't know when this is coming. It says coming soon. Listen, I'm not gonna get this. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, definitely shame on me. I can't buy another pink palette from Pat McGrath when my biggest complaint with the other one was that even though these are six shades, it could have been four shades because you can only get like one or two looks. So yeah, I'm not getting it. The, the quality is probably beautiful. I'm just, I'm, I'm more excited about the Bridgerton uh, season two on Netflix so excited more excited about that than i am about this collection sorry pat i will buy one of the lipsticks though but that packaging for the blush palette yikes i am fairly intrigued by this new palette from give me glow i've never tried give me glow give me glow is also a texas based indie brand i when is this coming launching soon it is the two moods eyeshadow palette here are the things that's holding me back First of all, I told you, I have been a little bit behind. I've been struggling to keep up with all the things that I promised to do. <laughs> all the endeavors that I've been taking on, all the things that I've bought. And I've had so much fun, but I've also been so much stress. So I kind of don't want to add more to that stress. And trying out an eyeshadow palette from a brand that I've never tried before takes longer to review, takes more effort than trying out an eyeshadow palette from a brand whose formula I already know and like I know where I'm getting myself into. And that is the reason why I might not choose this one and also it's really really big and I do think that it is borderline a monochromatic palette and having 16 super big pans that are all mauve berry 
I don't know if I think that that is the best for me. The uh, price is $64. That's like a midi palette from Natasha Denona. I, I know sometimes I hear people get upset. They're like, indie brands shouldn't be costing this much. I mean, every brand is allowed to put themselves at any price range that they feel that they are at. It's all about ingredients and uh, how much it costs them to like make the stuff and distribute the stuff and staff and all of that and that's different for everyone like not everyone is doing eyeshadows from the same ingredients for example so i don't think that you need to start imagine starting out selling 20 dollars eyeshadow palettes and now all of a sudden you're like yeah now i'm established they're all of a sudden 60 like listen they'd be lynched <laughs> They'd be lynched. Colourpop was almost lynched for like raising their prices with half a dollar. So whoop, I totally understand. I think you should put yourself at the price tag that you want to be. And I don't think that 64 is a weird price for an eyeshadow palette if it's really good quality. I mean, I pay those prices for other eyeshadow palette brands. I just don't know if this is the right time for me to try a new brand. But trust me, Give Me Glow is definitely on my radar. And I'm not saying no, I'm saying maybe. Uh, but probably not. Makeup by Mario is extending his lines with new shades, both in the Ultra Suede Cozy Lip Cream that he only had three shades in, I think. And there's also some new shades in his lip liner line. <laughs> These look really nice. I've heard some people really like this formula. I've heard some people not love this formula so much. I feel like this is something that I could be trying. These shades are very much more up my alley than the other ones were that um, he had because they were like all pinks and that's not really um, my type of vibe. I love lip liners. Lip liners is something that I use pretty much every time I do my makeup except today though because I'm having a liquid lipstick. If I have a liquid lipstick I usually don't do a lip liner but lip liners is just something that I really love. I love lip liners to so just define my lip line and I'm always open to trying new brands. I I want to try more makeup by Mario, but I will say the two things that I'm the most intrigued to trying by him, which is the sculpting stick and the powder highlighter, both of those in my shades have been sold out since I moved here. So as soon as those are restocked, I will be trying out the brand for sure, for sure I will. And I definitely could see myself getting this as well. I'm excited to see that he is expanding his line with more shades. I always think it's a good idea to bring out more shades in formulas that people already know and love. I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Tarte is bringing back the cheek stains. These are cheek and lip stains and they're coming back. I think this is like one of their OG products and they're bringing them back. I think this is the perfect time to bring them back because like cream blushes, cheek stains, all of those things, multi sticks, like I said, it is like all the rage right now and I think it's super smart. If you had a formula that was really popular before and you discontinued it because like things come and go. And I don't think that brands should be shy with the idea of re relaunching things that were popular once and then were not popular because they could be popular again if you release them at the appropriate time. I think it's a smart move for Tarte to release cream blush stains again now that they're so popular. They definitely could be selling again. I don't see myself buying these, but never say never. I haven't really tried a lot of Tarte. It's been less than five products that I've ever tried from Tarte. So I never say never, but I'm not like running out to the store to get it. Quickly want to mention this as well. Blend Money Cosmetics, they have a beautiful brush set. It is an amazing brush set and I definitely recommend it, especially if you like, if you like small blending brushes, this is a really good, like a really good set, but now they're also available as singles and they are $7 a piece. You can use a discount code on this. Uh, I do have a discount code with Blend Money. I will leave that down below. But I feel like, I, I truly feel like all the brushes are really good and I would recommend if you like small brushes to buy the full set. But I think for me, I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, so you're telling me that I can get another one or two of the ones that I like the most? That's really intriguing to me because it is really hard still and I don't understand why because I've been talking about this for years. We're talking five years at this point when I got the, here. This is, this is the old Morphe 507. This is like dead. There's absolutely, the, the, the bristles are all crazy. I don't really love Morphe brushes, but I remember getting this one and I, this is probably six, five, six years ago and I got this one and I've been going on and on and on about how hard it is to find good small blending brushes. And since then I have discovered the Refer 13, for example, this is the one I'm using today. The Blend Bunny Cosmetics brushes are really good. Like Sigma came out with some mini brushes, but it's still not that easy to find small blending brushes. And these ones are really good. And I kinda 
want to pick up some doubles myself especially of the ones that are like in the middle those are like really really good so yeah i'm i'm excited about this i honestly think that that is really smart because the brushes are really good and fairly affordable seven dollars for brush that's not that bad. Let's also talk about this new CC Nude Glow. Uh, is it a foundation or do they call it a tint? CC Nude Glow Lightweight Foundation and Glow Serum. Wow, that's a long name. It Cosmetics needs to calm down. I don't understand the long names. Can we just calm down a little bit? This one is available uh, for pre-order. It's coming in 22 shades. It Cosmetics is not known for having the most diverse shade range, but maybe they're getting better with time. I never tried anything from It Cosmetics. I know I swatched their... It is the CC cream, right? That's so popular. I swatched it in store and it is so full coverage that I was like... Because I usually don't wear full coverage. Today I'm wearing a, a like a sheer coverage serum serum thing and I think you can even see that this is not coverage like at all really and I'm just not crazy about the, the 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 full coverage life so I don't know this says light medium lightweight medium coverage though hmm with niacinamide and hyaluronic acid huh maybe this is the one maybe this is the one are you interested should I get it that could be the one, because that actually sounds like something I would like. And my skin loves niacinamide. Although I will say, I don't think... Like, niacinamide is like the buzzing ingredient right now. I've been using niacinamide for years and years, because my skin really loves it. I'm not crazy about makeup brands putting active ingredients in their makeup, though, because it is deterring some people from trying it, if that is an ingredient that doesn't work with your skin, because niacinamide is not the end-all be-all ingredient for everyone so i kind of wish that they would chill a little bit with that it's like we get it but could you like not <laughs> could you not like just just chill a little bit let's talk about these new illuminating powders by essence these are available in europe now i mean essence is a german brand so essence catrice i mean they're launching in their own country first which is europe uh that's just the way it is but it's probably coming i don't think essence is yeah essence is at yeah it's catrice that's no longer at ulta but essence is still at ultra i think catrice pulled out i think you can get it at amazon instead if i'm not totally mistaken but i guess these are coming to ulta sometimes essence news takes months though to get to to to, to the us so don't hold your breath Okay, let's talk about this one as the last one. And this is the new eyeshadow palette that is called Ariel by Beauty Creations. This is not an official collaboration with Disney. They're just clearly inspired by The Little Mermaid. I think the color scheme is really cute. It is just very, very large. And I do think... And, like, there are large palettes that I like. I will say I've been more into... There was a time when I was like quads is the best and i'm still having a very deep fond love for quads but i will say with time i've been more and more like you know what it's nice to have like 12 20 shades it's not bad but sometimes palettes gets to be too big and how i feel when palettes gets to be so so big and that's something that i mentioned example when i did the ranking this week i had my monthly rankings i talked about the blend bunny dollhouse palette even though i think it's great quality i do wish that it could have been taken down a little bit because i feel like when you have a really really big palette one or two things are usually going to happen either it gets to be another rainbow palette because you don't want to have dupes of colors, you don't want colors to be too similar, and then if you're going to fill up a palette that has 30 or 35 shades, you end up pulling in every color and all your palettes turn into rainbow palettes. Or, second one, you feel like you don't want to do a rainbow palette, you want to have a color scheme. This one has a nice color scheme. It's blues and pinks with a pop of purple, yellow, and red. That's nice, but since it's so large, a bunch of these shades ends up being redundant because they're too similar and also if we're gonna be honest this palette is only a green shade shy of being a rainbow palette and that's what i think is the problem with big palettes not every palette needs to have everything like most people don't buy one palette in their lifetime and use that palette forever people that do that usually don't want a rainbow palette they want a naked basic two <laughs> They want that, like, you know, the matte with the, the browns and the three beiges. They want that. The people that buy one eyeshadow palette. Most of us, we buy more than one eyeshadow palette. And 
most of us have no problem digging, dipping into more than one palette. I feel like the only people that I hear talk about being upset that they, they can't do everything with a palette, it's people on YouTube and people on Instagram because they don't want to tag several brands. If you're reviewing a Morphe palette, you don't want to tell Morphe in the caption of your Instagram picture that you used a Morphe palette and then dipped into a Colourpop. You don't want to tell them that because Morphe's not going to share your picture. So I feel like those people are the people that mostly complain about that because it's easier to get Morphe to share you if you only tag Morphe. I mean, my pictures never get shared by anyone on Instagram. My flat lay pictures do, but my, my face? Not so much. Maybe I don't have a, a shareable face, but I know that a lot of people talk about that behind the scenes, that they'd like to tag as few brands as possible because you're more likely to be, to be shared by a brand. And I just, this palette is cute, but it's slightly too big for my liking. Beauty Creations, I've heard good things about their products, but I just, this could have been such a cool 16 pan palette. This could have been such a cool 16 pan palette, right? And yeah. That's just how I feel about most of these big palettes. Could this have been smaller? <laughs> Edit yourself a bit. And that's gonna be it for this week's video. Am I? <laughs> oh my God, it looks like I have so much space. I can move around, but I'm gonna be honest with you. There's a light here, there's a light here, there's a light here, there's one over here and there's one over here. I'm like trapped, trapped by lights, but it's okay because I like how the light's looking. I think I think I I think I managed to make it look really good. Let me know if I missed something. Let me know if there's something that you're super super interested in buying. I'm actually quite happy that I'm not that blown away by the releases this week. Am I buying anything? I think like my money is pretty safe. I mean, I have the K-Love thing. I might get the It Cosmetics. Um, I'm not like, I'm not saying no to that one. It may be. And also Makeup by Mario, that's something that I want to try in the future, definitely. Other than that, I think I'm pretty okay. Right? I think I'm doing good. Hmm. Might get some more Blend Bunny brushes. I'm also not driving that off because I really do like those brushes. I hope you're having an amazing day. I hope you're going to have an amazing weekend. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again on Monday for this look right here. Bye!